Goku though. Genuine question though. Genuine question though. We got the most glazed characters of all time. You know the drill, one curse, it was three push-ups. We have not cursed this whole stream. I have been locked in. Is beating. Batman with prep time is beating Jesus. Huh? One v one. Did we give him an hour and a half? An hour and a half to beat Jesus is crazy. I can understand maybe like a week of prep time. Even then, crazy. Hour, hour of prep time to beat Jesus Christ is insane. <laughs> So in our last installment of this series, we went through a plethora of characters like Mihawk, Gojo, Saitama, etc. However, I'd be lying if I didn't say that that video missed some pretty obvious candidates. Hey, it's me, Goku! <coughs> Don't worry, we're gonna get to your face shortly. Me. I really felt obligated to don the mask once more and become a hater yet again. And plus, some of y'all did mention that you were waiting for this part anyways. So this video will be one of the few times where I'll break my golden rule of spamming a certain type of video. Also, get ready because okay. a lot of the characters in this video are heavy hitters. Because the first character we're talking about is Son Goku. Now, easily, how, okay, first off, first off, easily one of the most glazed characters of all time, in anime at least. However, I think he deserves the glaze. I think he's the, I think he deserves the glaze. I think Goku is the Lil Wayne of anime characters, bro. There are so many shonen characters and shonen anime that are based, not, if not based, Heavily inspired by Dragon Ball Z, bro. Go deserves the glaze. Deserves the glaze. Now, Goku was a very clear pick to put in this series due to the fact that he's like the most popular anime character of all. Literally, bro. All time. Shoot, he's one of the most popular characters in general. Uh Literally, bro. Pure heart is saying, protector of Earth, and contrary to popular belief, a good father. And a lot of people were wondering why I didn't put him in the last one. The main reason was because we had recently found out about Akira Toriyama. Ah, oh, rest in peace, bro. Rest in peace, bro. Rest in peace. I was death about two weeks before I made the video, and it was still fresh in my mind. So I didn't want to come off as disrespecting Dragon Ball fans so soon after the passing of a man who played a massive yeah. role in mine and many other yeah. people's childhoods. However, it's important to know that we can talk about the Goku Glazers without disrespecting the work of Akira Toriyama. With that being said, we can start off with the infamous meme, Can he But can he beat Goku, though? Genuine question, though! Genuine question, though! That's a real question to ask. He beat Goku though. This meme was derived from Goku being one of the stronger characters in fiction and boy do the Goku Glazers abuse it. Now, when you hear the meme sparingly, it's pretty funny, but at a certain point, it doesn't even feel like a joke anymore and people are genuinely just implementing Goku this is a valid image with a random conversations that didn't include him in the first place goku glaciers have ran this joke into the ground so much that the strength of goku is seemingly the only thing that people care about nowadays it's really unfortunate too y'all really be making this man look like an extremely one-dimensional character when all you do is glaze his strength and transformations <laughs> and i know that goku is strong but there are stronger characters out there if you only talk to a goku meat rider you think that goku is the strongest character in fiction or something okay wait let me try to name some characters who can be goku um is one punch man stronger than goku I actually genuinely don't know. I actually genuinely have no clue. No, yes, no. Yo-Yo's nose can beat Goku. Shut up, nigga. Ah, oh, I cursed, I cursed, I cursed, I cursed. I cursed. Yes. Yeah. It's looking mixed, y'all. It's looking mixed, y'all. I don't know, I don't know. So let me, uh, okay. Who can beat Goku? Can't, um, can't that one Ben 10 alien beat Goku? Um, what's, what's that alien called? Alien X? Isn't, isn't that stronger than Goku? Rimuru? I don't know who that is. I think Maharaga can. No way Maharaga can beat Goku, bro. Superman. I Not every Superman, but there are some Supermans for sure. You know, I'm going to throw one in there. I think Bugs Bunny is beating Goku, bro. I personally believe Bugs Bunny is beating Goku, bro. I'm not going to lie, bro. Goku going to hit him with a Kamehameha, and like Bugs Bunny going to take off his glove and catch it in the glove or something. Or it's going or, or to hit Bugs Bunny. And he's gonna do that thing that cartoons do where they just turn black and melt and their eyeballs are still there. And it's just gonna shake and then be fine. You know what I'm saying? 
Like, I'm sorry, but Goku isn't soloing all of Marvel or DC like some of his fans. Hell no, Goku's not soloing Marvel. That's another curse may say don't even get me started on superman versus goku some goku fans will get so mad about the results of the versus battles between these two i think superman is beating goku bro. but fail to realize that superman was doing some crazy things throughout his runs superman will beat the brakes off of goku and that's perfectly fine some of these goku glazers dead be losing sleep <laughs> over this fact it doesn't take away anything from his character unless of course you boiled him down to a device to make random arguments with people online about him beating other fictional characters goku mm -hmm. fans will also rant about everyone copying goku and how x character copied goku because their hair changes color when they transform we know that dragon ball z has influenced and has inspired many authors however for calling something a straight up copy or ripoff is disingenuous to the actual creativity some of these creators have put wait 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 are we talking about omni man there's no way someone unironically said omni man is beating goku bro nah i'm i i bet i have more faith in y'all than that i have more faith in y'all than that but in goku himself has been inspired by other characters like sun wukong the monkey king or even superman when you compare their origin stories there's nothing wrong with inspiration some goku fans just refuse to acknowledge that it exists then finally the worst part about some of these goku glazers is that some of them have never even watched dragon ball z at all and just start talking about things that never actually happened there are times where you can't even have good discussions with these guys because a lot of their claims are just baseless the only dragon ball z they've consumed is dragon ball z abridged which is really good don't Swear. get me wrong but it has caused irreparable brain damage to some of these goku fans for our next character we got Luke who doesn't really uh, interesting, interesting. I don't know too much about One Piece. Really have many aspects that I see people glaze personally. A lot of Luffy glazers will often yap about him being the best character in all of fiction, which is kind of a cliff jump to me. That's but a, I can't that's necessarily. A, that's a glaze. I'm not gonna lie. Necessarily blame someone for having that opinion. If that's what you genuinely think, you honestly got it. He's a main character, one of the biggest series of all time. His personality and characterization has never been portrayed as annoying to me, and his development and response to trauma over the series has been great. A lot of the time, though, the Luffy fans and the Naruto glazers will have wars over who's ideals are better while trying to dunk on the others actually both try to put down other characters while being obnoxious about their own i just ain't put the naruto glaciers in this video because okay. they so happen to be less in number and i guess we should address the 800 year old elephant in the room year five this transfer i'm not a one piece person i would love to be i just don't have time to watch a thousand episodes of anything i hear they're um making like a faster paced version of one piece i would be interested in watching that however gear five is literally one of the coolest anime transformations I have ever seen in my life, bro. I am not going to lie to you, bro. It is so creative, bro. Transformation has to be the most hyped up thing in the anime community in the last five years or so. Though. Like, this is cool, The way bro. people were yapping about this being the best transformation of all time is flagrant. They said that this transformation was going to break the internet like UI Goku. It didn't. And that this transformation was better than Super Saiyan. It isn't. Matter of fact, if you know anyone mm. who believes that Gear 5 is over Super Saiyan, disassociate with them. I can't speak on it because I don't know nothing about Gear 5. I'm just simply saying it looks cool. Rapidly or check them into a mental institute. Moreover, the actual abilities of the transformation itself get meat ridden even more because Luffy has Toon Force, which is a term that's been overused so much that it lost its meaning. There are clearly levels to Toon Force, from Looney Tunes nonsense to making sunglasses out of thin air. Like, Luffy's Toon Force is clearly weaker than what Bugs Bunny can do, and I don't want anyone to talk about this statement and say that Luffy equals Popeye in terms of Toon Force. You are lying. Luffy his Toon Force gets used so much that apparently this guy could be anyone just because of it. You can make a whole argument complete with all the sources and citations and write a 25 page paper and a Luffy Glazer will say that Toon Force solos. These guys ignore the fact that he still arguably could have lost to Kaido if Kaido hadn't been fighting so long before his encounter with Gear 5. But you know, my gripe isn't with just Luffy meat riders whatsoever. It's with a okay. greater force than that. I have gripes with those who glaze Oda himself. Now in the comments of the last video, I saw someone talk about Oda, the author of One Piece, being in the discussion for one of the most glazed characters of all time now oda isn't a character okay. at all he's in fact a real person but i don't really care i'm making an exception it's my video firstly i probably should address that i'm not a one piece hater at all like i think some of y'all believe that i genuinely hate one piece when i enjoy it quite a bit someone finna be like oh this guy always talks about one piece he must be obsessed and that's true i like this series a lot i should clarify okay. more often what i do hate about one piece though and it's not even the pacing the pacing the pacing oh my god oh my god the pacing oh my god the pacing I remember watching, oh my god, bro. I tried to watch One Piece. I think I got it into, I think I got to episode like 200 something. Bro, they were fighting some person and Luffy got stuck underwater or something for like three episodes. Three? Getting stuck 
for three episodes is absolutely egregious. He got out of the fight, right? He got out of the water, like beat the villain or whatever. I called my friend Cheerio because Cheerio's like, he's a really big One Piece person. I call him, I'm like, bro, I finally finished this fight scene. Luffy got stuck, bro. It was so annoying. I'm so glad it's over. He goes, oh, yo, yo, Luffy gets stuck in the next three fights. Dropped the series. Never watched it again. And he's going to go, oh, yeah, Zoro, he always gets lost for multiple episodes. I'm not watching that. I'm not watching that. I am not watching that. I can't. Pacing is horrible in the first few hundred episodes. Each episode was only a couple pages of... A couple of pages? No. No. No, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. Hot take. The pacing is not slow, but it's entertaining. Heck no. Luffy being stuck underwater while... Ka not Kaido. Uh, or Oolong? Orlong? Whatever his name was. Arlong. Arlong. Him getting stuck underwater for three episodes was not entertaining, bro. I can't. I can't, bro. I cannot do it, bro. Heck no, bro. Heck no. In the series itself, it's the nonsense that a lot of One Piece fans say, and they say a lot of it. Like, for example, to some people, Oda is like a god to them and have nicknamed him Gada, which is crazy meat gobbling, but I can pass it off as a joke. But for some unbeknownst reason, some believe that Oda can actually do no wrong and he's some mastermind who's playing all of One Piece since the 90s. If you believe this, you're just blatantly ignorant. The original plan for One Piece was something like Luffy going to the Grand Line, fighting the four emperors, finding the One Piece, and calling get a story from there there were no warlords supernovas none of that oda is just that good of a writer that he's had idea after idea after idea that he could help build upon in the plot like do you seriously believe that oda knew what egghead was gonna look like in 2001 it's actually more impressive that he's able to create ideas on the fly like this apparently yeah it's crazy like Bro, you can have ideas as you're writing something. Ain't no way this whole thing was planned out before he started he writing. He created the supernovas in a short amount of time to make the Saba Odi arc more robust. There's nothing wrong with this. A lot of authors have done this in the past when they get suggested an idea, like Kishimoto with Sasuke. Another thing I think gets dragged a lot by Oda Glazers is foreshadowing. Like, I could go more in depth into another video if y'all want, but Oda is an Talk amazing writer, so he's been able to make the plot work without something like hockey not being fully fleshed out, or make callbacks to past arcs like Skypiea to make Gear 5 even more special. I love the man's work, but jeez y'all be going overboard with how much y'all believe oda had everything planned before i move into the quattro espada if you're enjoying the video so far and you're new you might as well subscribe anyways come, come. on to ukiora who has to be a i don't know who this is i don't i don't know who this is top three most glazed character in all of leech i don't know when it happened but some of y'all be talking about this ukiora guy like he's really one of the top tiers in the verse y'all be putting him in a spot of gauntlets and people will legitimately say that he runs through them all and we all know what ukiora glazes cling on to too his segunda etapa this form has okay. caused so many people to say that ukiora is secretly the strongest espada which he isn't the common argument is that ukiora says that aizen doesn't know about his second stage and so his number four ranking isn't accurate and therefore he's the strongest and he fought ichigo Going yada 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 just because ukiora thinks that aizen doesn't know about his resurrection doesn't mean that aizen actually doesn't know this man aizen created the iran car and the espada with the hogyoku and not only that he planned all I, i'm i'm lost i'm lost i'm lost i haven't watched um uh bleach of ichigo's fights in the previous arcs to make sure ichigo got stronger one of these fights was against ukiora so you ukiora fans are telling me that aizen planned all of this IBY 155, thank you for popping in. I just never knew that Ukiora had a second stage. Does it make sense for a mastermind to plan something for someone and not know the full extent of all the pieces in the plan? Imagine you're helping a friend with a game you created, and there's a final boss you want him to be able to beat. Prior to this boss, there are a series of other enemies they should learn how to beat to make sure they are prepared for the final boss. And then there's one boss in the game that just happened to have a second stage that you didn't know about, even though you created the game. It just doesn't make sense. Your number is correlated with your strength. Therefore, Stark, Haribel, Bar and Yami are all stronger than Ukiora because their numbers are higher than his. Haribo might be suspect though, but for the sake of the agenda, we're putting her above him too. I know he looks cool and he had a cool dynamic with Ichigo with the idea of trying to make Ichigo give up, but he can still be all those things while also not being the number one Espada, which he isn't. Next up, we have the King of Curses, Sukuna, who's got- Uh, yeah, he's- he- him and Gojo though, him and Gojo though. Gotta be the second most glazed character in the series after Gojo. Honestly, if it weren't for Gojo- Gojo okay. existing, Sukuna would clear everyone in JJK in terms of the most meat-ridden character. Shoot, the author himself, Gege, is a Sukuna glazer. Sukuna has been portrayed to be the strongest sorcerer in history since the second episode, so some of the things are justified. But if you've read the manga, you know that this man Sukuna has had a roller coaster for his character for the past year. Spoilers for the current arc. Hey, hey, 
Hey, don't get mad at me. Do not get mad at me. Spoilers for Jujutsu Kaisen coming up right now. Skip to 10, 12. Okay. All right. All right. Leave for like three minutes. Leave for like three minutes if you're a Jujutsu Kaisen person. Okay. I am now hitting play of the manga so skip here to avoid it but the nonsense of Sukuna not going all out had all of his fans queued up to start gobbling him for like a month they started saying nonsense like Sukuna wasn't trying against Gojo and he's by far too strong for anyone in the series to handle when in reality both Gojo and Sukuna are neck and neck in strength like Sukuna was definitely making himself nervous on purpose for the first time in years to finally feel something in this fight or or maybe he started bleeding from his eyes to make Gojo feel better about the fight like come on now and I know plot Kuna was also a complaint going on for a lot of people in the community and I I will admit it was very overblown at times but i can't blame some people for saying that sukuna had plot on his side sometimes because it seemed like some stuff was going his way to actually progress the plot forward like we can say that sukuna is just to advance at jujutsu sorcery which makes sense he's the best at it or we can call his so-called skill in sorcery him just being a binding vow merchant who has spammed them like naruto has spammed rasengan's something that mm -hmm. i also believe to be true is that sukuna glazes and gojo glazes are both equally annoying and yes i know that's a hot take my reasoning is that since gojo glazes are more in number they automatically Automatically seem to be more annoying to deal with the truth is that they are two sides of the same coin with both fans believing that they can beat anyone in fiction for some unknown reasoning both ask dumb questions like who wins versus aizen or my favorite sukuna and maharaga versus goku class let's let, let's be objective here bro come on now what do you think is gonna happen if goku fights maharaga and sukuna dun 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 he's getting dun, dropped dun, 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 what are we talking what dun, 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 dun. time's up goku slams his guy at least with gojo glazers they have a win con in infinity and hollow purple so they can actually be annoying with his cross verse battles sukuna has strong fire and strong cuts he's not hurting goku and that's assuming he doesn't get speed loops before he even tries to attack i don't know it's just crazy to me that we don't be seeing people say as much stuff about sukuna fans when compared to gojo fans you Sukuna Glazers are lucky that this guy's fan base takes the brunt of the hate because some of you guys are up there with the worst of them. This segment is going to be kept a bit shorter than usual, mostly because I don't really see too much Minato Glaze. And that's not me saying it doesn't exist. I just haven't come. Uh, I definitely think Minato, 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 um, oops, my fault. He deserves the glaze. He's like the best Hokage. Across it. Like something I commonly see Minato fans talking about is how he had no overpowered Keke Genkai or that he wasn't a reincarnation of an Otsusuki. So he was pure talent and dedication, making all the things he did that much more impressive. And can I really blame them? Those are true statements. In Naruto, we typically see a lot of other characters with some crazy advantage because of their clan or something. But Minato was able to become Hokage and become the strongest one at that. Besides Naruto and Hashirama and Kakashi, just, just ignore those guys. Genuinely asking, are people saying he's a top, top tier or something? Maybe it's the flying Raijin or the run on site order that got people in a chokehold. Wait, 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 wait. Is Minato not stronger than Kakashi? Am I tripping? Am I tripping? Kage wasn't anything revolutionary because it was so short. To be honest, I don't really see what people are talking about. Oh my. Fast enough to beat the... Okay. All right. All right. All right. I think it's safe to say Minato is fast enough to beat the Flash now. He literally just teleports. This is a double grip, pepper grinder, extra spit, hold the teeth, level glaze, bro. Wow. 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 The Flash. This is Come interesting. On, the Flash? Oh, okay, the okay. Flash? I understand now. There are some of y'all who be giving this man crazy glaze. He is not beating the Flash. I don't care if he dodged the Raikage or anything. That teleportation is not fast enough. The yellow Flash is nothing to the actual Flash. How did you delude yourself into believing this? Minato fans, you dead gotta defend yourself. Does this guy speak for you guys? Dang, this is so crazy. Bro, who's That's the last character crazy. on the list? Talk to me. Talk to me. And last but certainly Batman, not least, we have Batman. 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 Batman is one of the three most iconic superheroes of all time and easily, in my opinion, the most glazed character, not in anime, cartoons, comics, but in fiction. In I like fiction. Batman, but I don't really have many positive things to say about the Glazers. These guys are easily the most delusional fan base I've ever seen. These guys will yap about Batman and his prep time and how he'll be able to beat anyone with it. If you watch WWE and you know who Paul Heyman is, it's like that type of glazing. Dangerous. Bro, people will say Batman can beat erectile dysfunction function with prep time like this is like bro bro Beast slayer a conqueror conqueror the goat of all goats to the cliche <laughs> at the end of the match the ultimate needle mover the head of the table 
these fans are the same people that really try to convince people that Batman will beat Kratos without prep time. Like, what are we doing? Without? Kratos fights gods. He is beating a rich white dude in a bat costume who kind of got hands. What? Here, sure, this man is stronger than the average human, but he gets bodied by Kratos. You see Kratos pummeling Balder right here? Yeah, each one of those hits are murking Batman on the spot. Batman fans will clamor about Gotham being so difficult to deal with with threats like Bane, Clayface, and the Joker, the Penguin. No one except Batman, the strongest and smartest character ever, is able to beat these guys. In reality, if any hero willing to murk or cripple these guys were in Gotham, Gotham will be chilling in like a month. Like, I think Symbiote Spider-Man could do some real damage in Gotham, to be honest. Honestly, Batman could probably do better in Gotham them himself if he just started to use his resources better like i know it's against his rules but just start shooting people i'm pretty sure some lead in the riddler's chest is putting him out of commission for a little bit we all saw how iron man was handling enemies in his first movie can batman not do similar things he's coming up with all these gadgets and gizmos when there's probably a more straightforward solution it doesn't help that batman be getting got from his writers too when he's able to fight and beat superman or shoot when he just straight up boxes up dark side it's things like these that fuel the fire of batman glaze a regular human shouldn't be able to do this like you cannot tell me that there isn't some sort of plot involved in this why is batman so strong to these guys a am i missing something is there some sort of power up that he got in the new issue that made him so strong why can't he beat everyone if your answer is because of money and technology then why is gotham such a problem for him another thing a lot of batman glazes do is that they will treat a lot of the ideals of batman and take them to heart as if he's a sane individual batman has done a lot of messed up things throughout his various comics batman is an actual crash out bro he won't kill you, but he'll break every bone in your body. If you're going to break every bone in my body, please just kill me. Why would why would you want me to be a vegetable for the rest of my life, bro? No. And fans just go with it. Batman is insane. He just hides it well. There's, of course, the sheer absurdity of the billionaire dressing up as a bat to fight criminals because his family got murked and he still hasn't gotten over the trauma, which he probably should get more therapy for. He also quite literally does the same thing over and over again and expects a different result when handling some of his villains. Y'all should have known this was getting brought up, but what is the fans' defense behind the handling of the Joker? Are we saying that it's because of plot? My bad. We actually can't say that, though, because if we assume Joker has plot armor, then we have to assume a lot of the times Batman should have got murked is also plot armor and we all know batman has none of that personally i've just accepted that these two are crazy people along with the tippity top of the batman yeah. some yeah, of the no batman doubt. glazes have ruined his character and honestly that's rough to see for one of the most popular characters of all time okay so what's that like six seven characters i'm talking about today so now i think i got all the main offenders for real for real i'm trying to up more to often i got more videos queued up for this that's calm that's calm i cursed three times let's go ahead and do that that's nine push-ups Most glazed characters of all time by Ola Masama. Hope you guys liked it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.